everyone. I'm Isabella Gollini and I'm a lecturer in statistics at uh, University College Dublin. I'm also part of Our Ladies and part of Our Forward. So all different um, task force of the Our Foundation in order to make uh, the use and the Our communities to be as more diverse as possible. So if you have any comments or any idea for any for the ways to make our um, the Our community more uh, diverse, please stop me and talk to me. Uh, today I'm going to talk about a project about exploring the structure of human smuggling networks. So this project is coming from um, collaboration with Paolo Campana, that is um, a criminologist at the University of Cambridge. He had this very nice data set that I'm going to show you and very interesting and very important and he couldn't find any statistical model that can be used in this context. So for this reason I start to work with Alberto Caimo that is another lecturer in statistics in Dublin and we start to develop this new modeling approach. So first of all about the data. So the data are coming from an investigation about the human smuggling out of Libya through Italy. This data set has been provided to Paolo by the Italian police because in uh, uh, October 2013 there has been the first big disaster in the Mediterranean uh, uh, for the people that are coming from Libya in the hope of finding a better life in Italy and throughout then Europe and all over the world. So in October 2013, a boat sank and more than 350 people died. Now we are still seeing on the news that this problem is continuing and we still haven't solved it. So what we want to do is to take data from an investigation that started in December 2013 and then also we know that it ended in uh, October 2014 and in this case we also have, know that some of the suspects that we have here actually were uh, some criminals and has been arrested. So we are starting using this data set that for which we know how it handed in order to develop a new model and see and interpret if it's working well or not. And then this model can be then applied to a wide um, other different context and to different investigations in that are happening in a similar way. So. so, but again, the data, so most of the people here are trying to escape from Libya. Actually, a lot of them are coming from different parts of Africa, and then go in Libya, and then they're trying to go uh, to Europe. And a lot of them go to the closest island, that is Lampedusa, that is this tiny island here in the Mediterranean Sea. And where they go there and then usually the Italian police is taking them and is uh, bringing them to Sicily and then to, with some different accords is going with different parts of uh, the Europe and of the world. So these data are coming from, so directly from the Italian police and it's the investigation that started from Christmas Day of uh, 2013 and ended in October 2014. In this data set we have, uh, the police have the wired up 29 suspects. So they started to wire up them and all of the conversation that they made and received at different uh, times, slightly different times. And we have information sort of about uh, who called who, how long the call lasted, and also we can potentially have also access to the text and, or, and the conversation. The main problem with this conversation is that uh, they are in different African languages and has been translated to Italian. I read some of them and they make no sense at all. And actually they have done also some text analysis on this one and they couldn't really find any useful information. So in this case, we will focus more on the fact that they made and received calls. And we'll see that it's already uh, providing a lot of useful information. And the great thing about this is that so the police don't have to spend money to transcript the conversation and to translate all of them. 
they can select on which conversation to focus based on uh, probabilistic approaches. So these 29 people, uh, or better, this 29 phone has been in contact with more than 15,000 uh, other people. In this case, so we call these 29 main phone uh, numbers to be ego, and then the other uh, number that they call they are alters. So these are 29 phone numbers that belong to suspects, and they may call anybody. So they can call their family, their friends, but also some potential clients and other smugglers. And we want to focus on trying to understand who are the smugglers. So who are the bad people? We don't want to have and to find out the client. We are not interested in discovering the victim of, uh, in this case, but we want to uh, discover the, the, the criminals. So this one is about the, the data about the investigation. So I've labeled E01 up to E19, some egos for which, so some suspect to, for which we know a lot about. So most of them has been arrested, so we know their name, their family, their, their occupation, and their role in this investigation. Then we have 10 unknown people, so they've collected the data, but it's still unknown to who these phone numbers belong to. So this one is just to show you that they made a huge amount of phone calls. So this one is the total number of, of calls that they made from uh, January up to October. And so there, are, there is one, Ego 09, 01, that made almost uh, 16,000 uh, calls. So an average of, let's say, more or less 200 calls for days. So they are very busy using their phones. They call also a huge different number, each one of these suspects. And we detected the number, the, the country, by checking the prefix. And so the, this one is a worldwide problem. And then also, we know that they call a lot of different people, so the number of alters is just the number of other people that they're calling to. So a lot of them called around a, a thousand different people in this period. So why I'm calling ego and alters? Because my modeling approach is about ego networks. So an ego network is a network that is starting from a person or a phone, and we know all about what is going on, to who is connected. So ego one called all different alters. Then in this case, we have more complex stuff. So we have multiple egos that are calling potentially the same alters. So they are different. Uh, phone numbers that are calling the same people. And also, we know that they are also calling each other. So for this type of complex networks, so where there is this high dependency between the observations, and the fact that the egos are not just randomly selected people, but are suspect, we have a high dependence model that cannot be uh, treated with classical statistical approaches. Here I'm just showing you uh, the network. So in this case, we have in the uh, uh, black square, if they, the, the two egos have made at least one phone call between each other, and is still in gray if they didn't make any call. So what you can notice here very well is that ego 01 called everybody. So you have a white square on the top uh, left side because he couldn't call himself but he calls everybody. So he's connected with everybody and he's a central person of this network. Then from this scatter plot, you can see that uh, most of the egos are also connected. So there is a lot of connection between our suspects. This one is, are the egos, and then here on the rows, uh, on the columns, we will have the alters. So it's not very uh, nice because they have more than 15,000 people to call. But what you can, I want to highlight is that we have an ego, ego 19, that isn't connected uh, to any of the, isn't, sorry, isn't sharing any of the others with the other people. So it means that this particular ego is calling its own uh, set of, uh, of people. 
So this is our data set if we wanted to use stati or usual statistical network analysis, we will, can use the ego ego network, so it's the first uh, um, metrics that we've seen at the beginning, so the relationships between our suspect that are extremely important, so it's the square squared on the top, and then on the blue uh, rectangular shape are all the phone calls that, we are, that they are making with the other alters. Actually, we don't have all of this gray area. So these are all missing data, missing information that may or may be not be important. So in order to build our model, we want to keep this fact in, into consideration, that the relationship between the egos are particularly important since all the egos are suspect, and we can have anybody as an alter. So we use a statistical model. So in this statistical model, we are making some assumptions. So we have always to remember that there are assumptions in statistical models. And the assumption here, I think is quite easy, is simply that each one of our ego and alter has an unknown position into a, uh, um, a latent space. So exists a space in which we have all of our suspects that scattered around, and the probability of them to be connected depends on their location in the latent space. So if two observations are very close to each other in this latent space, they have a higher probability of being connected. If they are very far apart, they are very, the, the probability of being connected is very slow. So these are our assumptions. And also in the model that we are using, we are also considering the what is so-called transitivity. So, for example, if two suspects are calling the same, um, a same person, this person is uh, very also likely... So, if, sorry, if two people are... Say that. I'm calling one person, and another of my friend is calling the same... And another person is calling that person again, we are very likely, myself and this other person, that is calling my friend to be friend. So this one is just uh, in terms of probability. So we are more likely. It's not necessarily true that there is a link, but we have a probabilistic way to assess if there is or not a probability. Okay, so what I've done at the beginning, we have studied the, just the ego-ego network, so we study our suspects. What we can notice here, so here I've latted with some information that we have, that we have the information about the role of these people into, uh, that have been arrested. We know that some of them are the big bosses, the organizers. And usually the organizers are the people who are handling and gaining the, model, uh, the, um, the money, in this case, so are the big bad guys. But then they are not the people that are going on the boat from Libya through Italy in order to bring the people around. They are just seated comfortably on their own place and, and handling a bunch of people that we call aid. So these aid are other criminals and they are the one that physically brings the people from Libya uh, through Italy. And then so we have done the yellow dot is for the unknown, so for those that we, of which we don't know anything. So we can notice that most of the time, very close to one of the big bosses of the organizer, there is an aid. And what we can also notice here is that we have in the center, ego 01, that it was the suspect, the, the phone numbers corresponding to the suspect who was calling everybody. So it's quite reasonable to have it on the center. Now I'm just focusing on two other uh, uh, phones. So ego 03 and unknown 04. I just want to show you that they are quite far apart in this model, uh, so in this output. Then, this one, I don't want to explain this, but I want just to tell you, if you use any statistical model, always run some good and sufficient diagnostic. It can be a simple regression or a very complex model, but always check that this model is fitting your data well. Otherwise, you can just gather misleading information. So this one is the output if I'm studying the ego-ego and the uh, ego-alter network. So here there are more than 15,000 
points, which correspond to our, our, our egos. I, not draw, I didn't draw the line connecting the ego and the alters because it will, it's just messy enough in this case. And so this is what you can see. It's not, I don't expect you that you think that this is my final answer, this, and this is not a useful result. But because I color depending on the number of people that they call. So the one on the, the purple color on, uh, around, uh, the farther, farther apart, are just the ones that are calling only one person. So are not very interesting people, so we can also kind of decide to discard them. But if we zoom in and we look at the position that we gather, if we model together the ego, ego, and the alters, we can see that something changed. I'm just focusing on a couple of cases. So here we have ego 01, that before it was in the center and now it's more far apart. So this means that ego 01 is a very important person for that, for the egos, but it's not really central in handling the alters. So in handling the, the clients or any other criminals that we didn't uh, wiretap. But then we also have some more interesting information here. So here, before I did a light about uh, Ego 03 and Ego 04, because they were quite far apart, but now they almost overlap. So we know that Ego 03 has been arrested and we didn't know anything about unknown 04. But now, knowing that this behavior is quite unexpected to have these two uh, suspects to be so close together, that we started wondering why. And then so, we actually realized that so our egos are just phones that has been wired up. And so we started checking if uh, ego 03 and unknown 04 are just two phone numbers belonging to the same person. Because you are, don't have a link between ego 03 and ego 04, so it's probably what you expect. If you have two phone numbers, you don't usually call yourself unless you're left, you have lost one of them and you want us to look where it is. But so this is why we don't have the call. And investigating this, it looks reasonable to think that they belong to the same person. So these are two phone numbers belonging to the same person. So this one was just a small model and we are still finishing to, to build the tool for the Italian police because we have shown them um, the, the, the previous results and the, the idea that we want to develop in this case, and it seems to be promising. But we need then to make a useful software that the police officer can use, because I don't expect that they are able to, to use directly the, the R code that I used. But we are so now working for an interface and in order to make them to, invest, to use uh, this method. What is great about this method is that it is extremely fast, so it doesn't take a lot of time to run, so as soon as they have more data, they can just rerun and see if anything changed. This modeling approach is a probabilistic model that can highlight unexpected behavior that can be investigated further. So we are not making any accusation by using this method. We are not saying that if we highlight someone, he is guilty, but we are just driving uh, the, and helping the police in deciding to which number maybe to wire up, so which one of the alters is behaving in a strange way, so probably it's worthwhile to check uh, the, their calls, and also to decide which conversation to translate, so they can just decide to focus and to look at some conversation and not all the conversation that they made, since with an average of each person that may have maybe more than 100 phone calls per day, you may see why we need to to just zoom out the number of conversations to be translated. Okay, so that's it for my talk, and thank you very much.